In this video, I'm going to show you the Revit tool that I made for a client that saves them tons of time and cuts down the time needed to make shop drawings by 80%. But before I continue, I must do two things. I must put a disclaimer. This video shows how these tools dramatically increase the productivity in Revit. However, in this video, I'm not showing how to create them and I'm not giving them away or selling them. That said, if you have an idea for a custom tool that would save you a ton of time, feel free to contact me. And the other thing, before I show you what the tool is doing, I have to show you what my client's workflow was previously. They're designing and manufacturing partition walls, and since most architectural projects nowadays are done in Revit, that was their choice of software too, so they could easily communicate with the architects. They use complex curtain walls with custom panels and custom million profiles to model the partition walls. Then they make assemblies out of these walls to facilitate the production of shop drawings that are also done in Revit. Here is how to do that manually. You select all the elements that need to be in the assembly. It's not enough to select the curtain wall. You have to make sure all the panels and mullions are in the selection. Then you create the assembly. Then you need to go and create views for that assembly. However, as you can see, these views aren't any good because the wall was rotated. So we have to first go and rotate the assembly origin and then to create the views again. Then we need to annotate the views. We have to place tags. We can do it one by one or by using the tag O function. However, that function places the same tag for all elements of the same category and we'll need to change them later. Then we need to make a new sheet and rename it. We have to place and arrange the views. These views need to be renamed appropriately and we need to duplicate the section to have one section for the door and another one for the panel and we need to move each section to its correct place. Then we need to dimension the elements and this is extremely tedious since here we can't dimension the entire wall. We have to go reference by reference to create three dimension lines. Additionally, for scheduling purposes, we need to assign some parameters of the individual elements so we can schedule them because otherwise we can't sort them by assembly. This is a slow and tedious process. And this is how it goes with the tool that I made for them. You can see there are three buttons here, creating assemblies, placing tags and placing dimensions. We start with creating assemblies. So first we click on the button and here we can assign a starting prefix and a starting number for the naming. And then we also have two modes of running, single and multiple. They both work by simply picking the curtain wall and all the elements on that wall are added to the assembly. The single is good for making one assembly per curtain wall, so we can select many different walls and the tool is going to make an assembly out of each one. The selected ones are highlighted in green and if I want to deselect a wall, I can simply click on it again. Note that it also creates the views, assigns pre-selected templates to them and places them on a newly created sheet which is placed together with the other sheets in the view browser. The views on these sheets are automatically arranged according to a pre-made configuration that the user can change. Everything is also named automatically and according to the user's desired naming convention. The multiple mode is good for making one assembly out of multiple curtain walls. The starting number now starts at the next available number. Note that now the already existing assemblies are colored in red during the selections and I can't select them. Again, I can select and deselect as much as I want to. I hit escape to stop selecting and then the assembly and its corresponding views and sheets are created. Then we can use the placing tags tool. When I click on the button, 
I'm prompted to select from a list of assembly views. Once I do so, I get this window. This is the tax configuration and it works by filtering by view names, selecting the category to be tagged and the desired tag to be used. And we can also filter different elements of the same category by their type name. We can add more fields to this configuration and we can choose between selecting a type name that contains a certain text or that doesn't contain a certain text. We can additionally save that configuration or load a pre-saved configuration. So we can do a pretty elaborate selection of tags for the different elements that we have in different views. Once we're happy with the configuration, I can just hit the place tags button. And I can see how many tags are created in the lower left corner. And you can see that in the views on the sheets, the tags are already placed right where we want them. The next step is to use the assembly dimension tool. When I click on the button, I'm prompted again to select from a list of all the assembly views. And when I do so, all the dimensions are placed. We can see them on all the views. We have two or three lines of dimensions, depending on what we need. And depending on a pre-made configuration that you're going to see in a minute. You can see that we have dimensions for the doors, the panels and the millions as required. And the two handles both single curtain walls and multiple walls for the dimensioning. This is the configuration window where I can select the offsets for all the different dimensions that are going to be placed as well as the dimension types for them. And below here, you can see all the additional settings which allow for the creation of dimensions exactly where we need them and not where we don't. And these are the initial settings for the creation of the assemblies and their views and how they are placed on the sheets. Please tell me what you think about this tool in the comments. Would you use such tool? Do you have such tool? Are you using similar tools in your projects? Do you want to learn how to make such tools? There's soon going to be an article about that on my website. So go to revitexperiments.com and subscribe to receive updates. That was all from me for now. See you next time.